Hi guys, welcome to Learning Rabbit. I hope you have seen the last video in which we created a REST backend, a pretty simple one written in Python and Flask, in which we made this application. But that was just the REST. But now is the time to dockerize that REST backend. If you haven't watched that video, the link should be here. Please click on that, watch that, and come back here so we can continue building it in the Docker platform. So now the first part is we'll see the application overview, see the parts that we have covered, see the parts that we haven't covered, and then we create a Docker file for the REST backend. But at the end of it, we'll test the endpoint. So this was the overall architecture for the web application. And this is what we are focusing on in this lecture. We'll just be focusing on creating a Docker file for the blue part which is the REST application that we built in the last lecture. We've been able to test the endpoint from the browser to the basic application. Now let's see if we can build a Docker application around it and if we can access that from the browser or not. For the database, we'll see that in the later lectures. Now let me shift back to my editor. So this is the app.py, the main file that is running the Flask server. This is the endpoint that we exposed, and this is the port that we exposed it on. So now our purpose is to dockerize this app.py file. So everything begins with the Docker file. So now let's start writing the Docker file. In the Docker file, the first part is the base type. In this, we write the image or the, uh, or the base OS that we want to use to begin with. So I'm going to use a Python Slim, which is again a Linux based image, has Python installed on it. And then we have some modifications, right? And then we have some ports. And at the end, we have the init script, right? So for the modifications, uh, I need to have an environment variable, I will use this environment variable for the port or I'll say it as rest port. And I want to have this as, a, I want to have a default value for this as 5000. I want to expose a port, the same port that I've used above, but I'll have to use an environment variable here so that we can configure this at runtime by passing in the environment variable, right? And inside the modification, we also want to uh, install all the requirements that are needed by our application. So for that, what we need to do, first, we need to copy the requirements file. I'm going to copy that in the root. Then I'm going to install all those dependencies. First, let me just do this and keep it above. Uh, the run command, I'm going to run pip install minus r requirements dot txt and this would be in my root since i've copied that in the root so i'm going to install the requirements here once those so after we have written the statement for installing the requirements the next step is to expose the port which we have already done and at the end we should write a command that should be running so, yeah. and at the end of it i'm just going to run the python.app.py file so when this app runs it is going to start the server and as you can see it will come here in the main point but now we have hard coded the port here and the port should actually be now used from the environment variable that we have exposed which is the rest underscore port and i'm going to import the os module and once we have done that the rest port will now be configurable using the environment variable in the docker file we have 
use the environment variable rest port. We are exposed using that environment variable as well. So whatever value the environment variable has, that port will be exposed and that port will be executed or that port will be used by our REST application. So we have used the base type. We have an environment variable for port configuration. We have copied the requirements file. We installed the requirements file. But we have missed one part. That part is to copy everything that now we have in the current directory into the root so that we can actually also have the code base in the root directory. So when we run this, app.py actually exists in the root directory. So now let's go back to the terminal and run this. First, let's build the Docker file and then run it. Now let's move to the 7.3 folder. I have copied the existing code of hashtag monitor from the day 7 to day 7 3 so that we can build onto it. So now if you go inside this, I will see all the code. If I open the app.py, I should see the updated code. You see that at the end of it, I have the rest port environment variable. And I also have a Docker file so I can easily execute Docker build here. I'm going to call it day 73 or let's name it something else. Let's name uh, it as hash tag monitor rest. Let's build this. You see that since the Python image was already existing on my laptop, that was fetched quite easily. Then the environment variable was exposed. Then the re requirements file is being copied and now it is installing the requirements. Since this file has been copied into the root, you see that the download is happening. It is also installing Python Twitter and everything that it requires. So once this is installed, we can start running the application. So now the point is to Remember to use minus ti, the container ID that we want to run, or I can use the hashtag, or let's just run this container. So this is the container ID, <clears throat> and now the environment variable that we used was the rest port. Uh, I can avoid this because by default it is going to take 5000, but you are free to do that if you have the 5000 port occupied on your system. You can use minus E rest port equals to some number here, for example, 6120, something like this. Anyways, I'm not going to do that since 5000 port is free on my laptop. And I'm not going to run any command on it because I've already specified the command inside my container. Let's see if I run this, what happens. So you see that the Python server is now up, but now it is up inside a Docker container. If we now go to a browser, we see this, that the site cannot be reached because the port that we used, which is 5000, has not been forwarded outside the Docker container. So we have to stop this. And we have to write this or yeah, we have to write 5000 colon 5000. I hope you remember minus P is used to port forward. If you want to revise about port forwarding, the link should be here in this video and I'll copy that in the YouTube description as well. So when I run this with port forwarding, Actually, minus P should go after run because that is the format. So, because whatever comes at the end actually becomes a command. So that is why you saw that 
Docker is interpreting this as a command. That is why make sure you place minus p here after the run command. So when I do this now, I go back to my browser and I refresh. I say not found because obviously the URL was slash search and then we are going to give a, a hashtag that you want to search. So I'm going to give earthquake because I have this earthquake. But let's give learn. Let's give COVID-19 because as you remember in the last lecture, we gave the last uh, the last tweet that we did had COVID-19 in it. So this should give us true. So this is doing something here. It's still doing. Yeah. So it took some time to reach the Twitter server based on my internet connection. But you saw that the query was this. The tweet that we did there was trying something out and we did a hashtag COVID-19. So it matches and it says matches true. Before I end this session, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Come on to the next video where we Dockerize the MySQL database and in the next, we will make them talk to each other. So stay tuned, keep learning, stay safe, stay home and don't forget, learning rabbit.